This promise came from heaven, a blessed peace and Choir, please come forward.
great gospel songs and hymns. Let's stand and sing page 40. 40. 40. 40. 40. 40. 40. May be seated. Thank you for being here today. We hope and pray that you're looking forward to a good service. Have a wonderful time. The choir sounds amazing. Amen. Amen. That was almost convincing. Yeah, we we certainly enjoy having you here with us today. I asked you to feel at home, feel welcome. Um, as you'll notice, sometimes we have some chairs in the back. So if you're going to the restroom, you'll have to come down this middle aisle here and go around or go through the outside doors. We ask you don't come across the front if you're going to the restroom during the videoing because the camera tries to focus on you and it uh, makes it hard for those at home. Um, we have Sunday school at 10, worship service at 11. Not very far from Wednesday night activities starting back up. So please, please be much in prayer for those Wednesday night activities. If you're still willing to help on Wednesday nights, we're Stephanie now, y'all yeah. still have some... on Wednesday nights for Sunday school, whatever you would like to do. If you are interested in working with our youth at all, please just sign up on that QR code. It's just asking for your name, email address, and phone number, and that's so that we can get in contact with you as well. So, would appreciate it. Yeah. While we're talking about the QR codes, those QR codes are very important. You say, well, I'm here every Wednesday. I'm here every uh, vertical event and all those things that we have down here. Uh, I'm here. They know I'm here. Well, yes, you're here, and we know you're here, but we're trying to keep account for food and those things on those. So please go ahead and sign up on those. Use those QR codes. Uh, they've taken the time to create them. It's very simple. Scan it with your phone, sign up, and you're in there. Uh, that way we can always be sure to have enough food and enough uh, people here to take care of the kids that are here. Um, also, with that being said, Wednesday nights and positions available. Um, Gabe and uh, Porky are still taking uh, sign-ups for positions. It's that time of year. Uh, we will be voting uh, in two weeks from today. Our conference um, most likely will be a short service that morning and we'll have conference because we go through every position of the church all the way from the deacon chairman down to the bottom. So we will be having that. It's very important for you to be here for that service. It's a big 
uh, earmark of how our year is going to go and how people are going to uh, respond. And, and if, you, if you're not here and you don't like how something turns out, then you, you really don't have a voice in it. But we want you here for that conference. We want you to be here to see the workings of the church. That way, if sometime through the year, you need to know well, who's in charge of this and who's in charge of that. You already know because you attended that conference. And I'll go this far as your pastor to let you know this. Conference is important for you as a member of the church to be a part of. It's where the business of the church takes place. It's where you have your vote. As we come around and shake your hands and give you all rights and liberties to any male or female member in the house of God, that's where you exercise those rights is in that conference. So we would love you to have you here with us the third Sunday of that month. Um, and there's a lot of work goes into that, so these deacons and these lay members need your support with that as well. Uh, again, Wednesday night, August the 9th, is Vertical Students Kickball Veterans Park. Saturday, August the 12th, will be Daughters of the King Little Ladies Conference. Girls ages 5 to 13, see Katie Smith or Sarah if you want to sign up for that. Uh, I think sign-ups is closed, correct? We have a few extra shirts, so if you do, if you didn't get a chance to sign up and you would still like to come, you can still email for them. Okay. Um, Sunday, August the 13th, that's next Sunday, we'll have a baptizing here uh, that morning uh, in the pool. So we have uh, right now... I think we still have Ryder. He's still in for that. I've threatened to hold him under. and uh, uh, he, He's not give up yet. So if anyone else is wanting to be baptized here at the church, then the 23rd is Vertical Students Kickball again. The 27th will be our off-site service. Terry and uh, Wanda Stevens has offered us their place again that we were at last year up on the river. So uh, Shannon has talked with them, and we're looking forward. We'll have uh, dinner and service and baptizing there. We have uh, several that wanted river baptizing. So that'll be our off-site service. That day, there will be no service here at Harmony. We will be there. Uh, last year, I was talking with Melba some. If you want to sign up or do anything, see uh, Melba or Tammy and Porky Chambers, talk with them if you want to sign up. Uh, but last year, there was some meat donated, but everybody brought enough. So it's going to be bring, bring a meat, bring a side, bring a dessert. And uh, we'll have drinks and stuff there. But there'll be more to come on that, our uh, off-site service. Um, Saturday, uh, September the 9th, is the Harmon, Harmony Women's Conference. Uh, got some more info on that in just a minute. The 21st is the Harmony Car Show and Barbecue. So please be much in prayer for that. We'll have some um, uh, flyers to hand out soon for that. And then the 11th of November is the Harmony Seniors Dinner. And that's ho hosted by the Vertical Student Ministry. Sign-up's coming soon. On the Harmony Women's Conference, remember to register uh, and get signed up for that. It's 8.30 to 2.30, September the 9th, $25 registration fee. Uh, read on down to the bottom. Uh, it says door prizes and donations are needed. Please see Tabitha Chastain if you can help. So they're needing door prizes and donations for the uh, random gifts and those things they hand out. Tabitha, do you want to say anything, kind of put a general scope on what kind of items you're needing? So if you see that and want to help Tabitha with that, please do that. Prayer list this week. Remember all those it's our duty to pray for. Good to see Miss Jennifer here with us today. She had some surgery this week. We love you. Thank you for letting us pray for you. and glad you came through all well. Um, we still pray for you every day because we know who you have to live with. Amen. We love Ronnie too. So um, Keep remembering uh, Charles Chandler, Jennifer Grizzle, Bonnie Morgan, all those, Patricia Cranford, Kathy Downey, Easton Roper. Easton's a young man that had the uh, born with a cleft palate. He's had like 19, 20 surgeries. He actually had surgery again this week for another skin graft. Uh, one of his skin grafts didn't take, so please remember him. Anyone else? Randy Davison goes Tuesday, 8.30 for some tests. Keep remembering Randy. Anyone? That, I have a friend of mine. She was with Carl Ingram is in the hospital, <coughs> and she's been on a ventilator and dialysis. And she's just, she, they don't have any idea what's wrong with her. And she's just, it's been awful. And her family is just devastated. 
Maybe later. Welcome, Abby. Welcome. Hello, my name is Carolyn, and I just want to thank everybody for all their prayers. You know, revival last year, I wasn't here, but I watched a lot from home the best I could. And I just remember there was always, well, Tommy's not here, Tommy's not here. This year in revival, I was back in my spot back here, running things like I had in the past. And it was all about how good God is. Also, uh, Lisa's got a fundraiser for the junior youth. See her after church for that. If you want to hold one up, I'll announce right quick. We had some map hats made, and we donated those to the junior youth. We have some coming for the ladies as well. These are more men colors. So that's going to be a little fundraiser. So when they take the junior youth to do pizza and those kind of things, it'll be for them. So please see Lisa after church if you're interested in those. Junior Verk will be here this Wednesday. Amen. Anyone else? All right, if you'll stand your feet, those have been selected. Oh. Please stay after and talk about the couples Oh, sorry. Couples retreats coming up February. Kisa and uh, Caitlin have been working on that. We'll ask you to stay after church and talk with them about that today. All right, those have been selected to take up morning offering. Everybody would please stand. We thank you for being here today. We're looking forward to this service. Joey Reynolds, you lead us to the Lord in prayer.
another one of our oldies but goodies. Feel free to join us since I saw the light and he sent me to. Bro. 
kids to the children's church. This, this is really, I don't want to say it's my last Sunday because I'll be back definitely, but I'm getting ready to move to college Friday. And this will be my, this will be the, go dogs. that's what, go dogs. okay. As long as there are no Tech fans or Bama fans, there might be some Bama fans. The fall, oh, yeah, there's the Fosterums over there. Hey, Alabama had their time, so it's Georgia's turn, okay. Getting ready to move there, and I got a request. Someone, and I quote, wanted me to bang the keys. So I'm going to sing. I haven't sang this song in a very long time. It's a Jerry Lee Lewis version of On the Jericho Road. And I don't have the words with me, so I listened to it on the truck ride here just to, to remember the words. So we'll see if I can remember it. Bear with me. Let's see if we can do this. A 
Let's travel along on the Jericho Road. There's room for just two. Brother, don't have your load. Just bring it to Christ. Your sins you must confess on the Jericho Road. Your precious heart he will bless on the Jericho Road. There's room for just two. No room, no less. Talking about Jesus and you. Each burden he'll bear. Each sorrow he'll share. Well, there ain't never a care. Precious Jesus is there. Hey, brother, to you, this message I bring. When hope may be gone, he'll answer the same. Just bring it to Christ. Just bring it to Christ. Been a long time. Your sins you must confess on the Jericho Road. Your precious heart he will bless. That's Jesus on the Jericho Road. There's room for just two. No more, no less. Talking about Jesus and you, each burden he'll bear, each sorrow he'll share, there ain't ever a care, Jesus is there. care. Precious Jesus is there. (laughs) Thank you, thank you. Our kids are special, amen? Amen. Always looking out for us. I came in the hallway this morning and Finn handed me a bottle of water. He said, I got this for you. Your voice starts sounding bad. So, (laughs) thank you, Finn. I'll try to use that water today. Uh, Where's Bailey? Bailey, come here for a minute. How many of y'all have got a sweet Bailey hug today? Amen? Come here. Can you tell everybody what today is? My birthday. Yeah. How old are you? Three. Hold it up so they can see. Bailey turns three today. And if you, if you know love or you don't know love, let Bailey love on you. Run back to Grandma. She has uh, been a blessing to so many. But I see her going from person to person, always sure to give me a hug at the beginning and at the end. <clears throat> and I look back and... Now I see some of those same ones when we first came here. They're going off to college. They're uh, going to be out of the nest, so to say. But then I'm reminded of how well this church loves because my son, who's away four and a half hours, will tell us, somebody text me today. I got a text. I got a call. That's what we have to do to these kids. We have to keep encouraging them. We have to keep loving them. And they'll come back as we have seen them do in the past. But we have so many going away uh, to college. And and in the next few weeks, we're going to be a a few less in number. But God's going to take care of them, I know. But I look back through the church and I think about when some of them could swing from our arms. And now they're leaving the church's arms and going off to school and going to be out in the world. And and church, if there's ever been a time that we need to pray for our youth, it's right now. We need to pray a hedge of protection around them because there's a world out there and there's a Satan that's going to and fro seeking whom he may devour. Amen? And he'd love nothing more than to get a hold of one of Harmony's kids and say, Harmony, you failed with this one. Well, I want you to know we've got success and we've got proof in this church, so many 
that we can say we're not going to fail. We're going to keep praying. You pray for those kids. Thank you, Ian, for that. I couldn't have remembered the words, much less be able to play along with it. So great job to you. Um, got your Bibles want to follow along today? Matthew chapter 16. Matthew chapter 16. If I had a thought, one above another today, it'd simply be, who do you say that I am? Who do you say that I am? Who do you say that He is today? Where is He in your life? What uh, title does He hold? And it, it's so strange that we, uh, uh, this message, it's not strange, it's God. Uh, but as we were uh, standing in the foyer today, there was certain questions about this very thing. Brother Pat, thank you for coming and talking to me. But, but I, I want you to know something today. Every one of us, has the ability, and Brother Mike, we talked about this, of free will. Amen? Uh, I know that was in y'all's Sunday school class today, the senior Sunday school. Every one of us has the ability to have free will. And in that free will, we give Jesus a position in our lives. You know, we're talking about church positions and we're talking about those things, how we're going to put somebody in charge of this class or that class or this uh, entity or that entity, whatever it may be, and we're going to look to that person to be in charge. Well, I want to ask you today, what position have you given Jesus Christ in your life? What position have you given Him? Are you the head of your home or does Christ and you serve in the same capacity together? The both of you, you walk hand in hand following after His uh, will and His way. The book of Joshua says this, As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. All God's people said, Amen. In order to serve something, listen to me real close today, in order to serve something, you must look as that being more superior than you. And I want you to know something today. God should be more superior in your home because it's because of Him you have your home. It's because of Him you have your health. It's because of Him you have your wealth. It's because of Him that you have everything that is about you and that makes you. So who do you say that I am today? Who do you say He is? There comes a, a very important time in our lives to when we're growing older. And, and we're starting to realize and know we, we can't do the things we once done. And there was another conversation about that this morning, wasn't there, Miss Tina? And we'll leave that alone. Y'all come talk to Tina about that one. But she may be missing pickleball for a couple of weeks. But there comes a point in time in our lives to where we go through the world likes to call it a midlife crisis. The world likes to say that we're, we're, we're moving up and we're leaving our legacy and we're, we're doing something else. But I, I want you to understand this. I believe God wants us to be as youthful as we can be as long as we can be. Amen? When we're serving Him, we're supposed to have a... a the Bible says that we should have a childlike faith. We should be as children. We should come to Him as children, not as, well, I'm 70 or I'm 60 or I'm 50 and I'm, I'm getting older. I can't do those things. God still wants us to do the same things we did when we were 7 and 8 and 9 and 10, and that's simply serve Him and worship Him. You're never too old to serve God. You're never too old to worship God. You're never too old to, to move a little bit along with the music like I've seen some of them doing this morning. But, but I want you to be uh, much in question today of where God is in your life, where Jesus is in your life today. So we're going to try to read a little bit to you. Uh, Jesus had pulled His disciples aside in, in this chapter here, and, and they were, uh, uh, had come to Caesarea there, uh, Philippi, and, and he, had, he was asking His disciples some que the questions. Now, I want to try to paint a picture for you here. And, and, and trust me, I don't know why it's important today, but we're going to try to tell you how God showed us. But Jesus had pulled His disciples away, and they were here in Caesarea Philippi, and they, they had got about 25 miles north of Capernaum. And you say, why is that uh, important today, Pastor? Why do we need to know? Why can't you just say, this is where they was, that's what the Bible says, we don't need to know uh, where it is on a navigational map or how far they were from the DQ or how far they were from the Zaxby's. How many of you can live without Zaxby's? I don't think we can, amen? I, I mean, the other, other day I was uh, 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 doing a little search and there, there's a Zaxby's on about every corner. I think they're, they're, Becca, forgive me, but I think they're trying to compete with Chick-fil-A. But they're trying. But, but here we are, we're 25 miles north of Capernaum. And you say, why is that important? Because, listen today, 
You feel left out. You feel pulled apart. You feel uh, left behind. You feel like God separated you from something. You feel like God's moved you from the place you were. Listen, He done it to His own disciples. He pulled them out. He got them away. And He began to talk to them. And He began to check with them. And say, who do you say I am? Don't get caught up in the the glory. Don't get caught up in the madness. Don't get caught up in the excitement. You've still got to remember who I am. And so he pulled them out and he got them aside. So today I want you, if you feel like you're standing alone in some things and you feel like you're standing in a a corner and you've not been uh, uh, called on, you're the last person to be picked to play dodgeball or you're the last person to be picked to play uh, 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 Red Rover, Red Rover, that was the game. You kids don't even know that. Y'all know what this is. Y'all don't know what nothing is to to listen to me, church. I'm going to be fundamental today. Uh, um, The church, uh, listen to me, the church could use a good dose uh, of Red Rover, Red Rover. And you say, why is that? Uh, Because the enemy uh, is trying to break the wall of the church and brethren I remember how we would call those kids and we'd get those that was I'm just going to say like me on the husky side and brother Stan we'd get a hold and we'd grip each other's hands we'd get real tight we'd even cheat a little bit brother Terry and we'd reach over and grab a hold of a belt loop or a strap of somebody beside us Uh, church I want you to know something Uh, if we could play Red Rover Red Rover uh, right now and we could get yoked up uh, and we could get bonded together Uh, listen to me real close church Uh, we need to be intertwined Uh, um, the Bible says where God's people uh, are joined together uh, in one mind uh, in one accord Uh, I want to tell you brother and sister today uh, uh, the best thing we could do uh, is get yoked up uh, and say send Satan right over send him right over we're ready oh I didn't know I was going to get into all that you know how long it's been since I played that game it was in the old blue gym down there at the middle school at the time brother I want to think about 6th grade how we ride by there now and it just fogs my imagination brother Stan out of what we used to have we had simplicity. Uh, we didn't have the greatest facilities in the counties. Uh, but I want to tell you what we had. Uh, we had people that loved us uh, and taught us about core values uh, and taught us about being uh, a true friend. Uh, I want you to know today that's what I'm going to try to tell you today. we got to have Jesus uh, and we got to have Him as a true friend. It don't matter what other material things you have. Uh, But here they are, they're 25 miles north of Capernaum. Uh, They're barely, barely inside uh, the borders of Israel. Uh, They're just right on the edge. Oh, you may feel, I may not get to reading today. You may feel like you're right on the edge. I'm almost out of the promised land. You may feel like you're sitting on the border. How many of you have been to that place up there in the Blue Ridge Mountains to where you can step inside two or three states just by stepping over a line? Some of you today, you're standing on heartbreak. You're standing on despair. And you've got success and a promise. And brother, you're standing in the middle and you say, I don't know which direction to step. I want you to know today you need to step towards Jesus. You need to step towards that promise. You need to step towards that success that He's already laid out in your life. With life comes changes. And these men had seen some changes. Oh Lord, had they seen changes. They'd been able to walk, talk, sit, eat, laugh, joke, cry, pray with the disciple none other than Jesus Christ Himself. They'd been able to be with the Messiah. They'd been able to see with the Prince of Peace, the Mighty Counselor. Um, Brother Anthony and Jenna singing that song, <clears throat> All the Things He Is. Uh, and I have to ask you today, Tina, I, I couldn't think of that song, but think about it. Who is He today? He's the a wonderful Counselor, Prince of Peace, Mighty God. He is Jesus today. But who is He in your life? I'm going to try to read. We're going to get in the 13th verse, and we're going to read through the 20th verse. And you may be sitting today and saying, "Uh, Pastor, I already feel like you're preaching to me. I need to come to the altar where you feel free to go ahead uh, because I want you to know something today. 
if you're sitting here spinning in that little zone of the unknown and you're sitting there and you're saying, well, I don't know where I'm at, but this message is for me. Uh, come find yourself and you'll enjoy the last part of this message even better. Come find where God is in your life. Come find where Jesus is and what He is to you. But this is uh, in my Bible. It's titled Peter's uh, a Confession of Faith. When Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, He asked His disciples saying, Whom do men say that I am? I, the Son of Man, am. Uh, See, he was asking them, who do men uh, say that I, the Son of Man, am? That's kind of a, a question with an answer in itself. Uh, it, it sounds like something I used to get in school. Uh, uh, two and two's plus four. Uh, uh, will you tell me what the, what, which one's the sum? <coughs> that sounds easy to y'all, but it was hard for me. But it's a question and answer in itself. He said, whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? Who do they say I am? And you see, well, well what was he asking them for? Why was he, was he wanting them to be reporters and come back and tell, no, I want you to know something. Christ wasn't asking them, report to me the news. This is what he was asking them. Be a witness. Be a witness of what you've already heard. Be a witness of what everybody else believes. Be a witness of the truth and the gospel. Be a witness of what I've already laid out. He said, I need you to be a witness. Sometimes we, we get the question and, and we get to saying, well, what do I feel and how do I feel? Sometimes it's important to know others and say, man, they've got such a glow and such a gospel about them. It's okay. Listen, the world we live in, we spend so much time patting ourselves on the back, we forget to pat others on the back. Amen? We sent, uh, that, that was weak, y'all. We spend so much time celebrating our own success, we forget to celebrate others. Amen? We need to celebrate others when they do well. And that's what Jesus, he was like, tell me that I'm making headway. Be a witness to what you've heard. And they said, some say thou art John the Baptist, some Elias, and others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He saith unto them, then he goes to ask them, he said, but whom say ye that I am? When you hear these things of John the Baptist and you hear Elias and, and you hear Jeremiah and you hear these other things and you hear them say, well, that, that's who that is. Did you witness to him? Did you witness and say, no, listen to what I've seen him do. Listen, listen to where, like Brother Dwayne preached in uh, revival, listen to when we were at that marriage feast and he turned the water into wine. Listen to what I've seen him do when we were on the ship there in Galilee. Uh, listen to what I've seen him do to the uh, paralytic man. Listen to what I've seen him do. That is none other than the Messiah. That is none other than our Messiah today. You know, it's okay to take possession. I wonder how many of you today have taken possession and I'm going to get to that in just a minute but it goes on and it reads he says but whom say ye that I am and Simon Peter answered and said thou art the Christ the son of the living God wow I like what Matthew says here Matthew says it a little different than Mark and, and Luke does but Matthew, there's been some debate over this, and I didn't know that till this week, but there's been some debate that, that Matthew might have added this in. But I think Matthew knew that in 2023, we was going to be reading this in a time when the world would like for us to think that our God's dead. Amen? The world would like to think for our, us to think that, well, maybe there's no hope. Well, maybe there's this dark gloom and despair on every corner. Maybe you're questioning in your mind, is this God real? Is this God true? Is this God faithful? And Matthew said, there's going to be a man that preaches, and I want him to say it just like this. Uh, he said, of the Son of the living God. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. We serve a living God today and His Son uh, was a petition for our sins uh, uh, that through Him and through His death on a cruel cross we might have eternal life if we believe in Him. And Jesus in the 17th, and Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. But my Father which is in heaven. Amen. He never vacated. Listen to me real close today. He never vacated his throne. God never vacated the portals of glory. Listen to me. It's never been 
unwatched. It's never been unmanned. It's never been uh, out of service. It's never been under repair. It's never been remodeled. It's never been revamped or brought up or revitalized. Uh, it's been the same. He said, my Father which is in heaven. You read all the way back to Genesis. And brother, I'll tell you this today. He's never left it unmanned. And He still does not leave it unmanned today. But He did send His Son from where in the beginning He said, let us create man in our image and our likeness. He did send His Son to be born of a virgin and die a cruel death for us. But He said, but my Father which is in heaven, and I say unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. That's a bold statement. That's a bold statement that hell will never stand a chance. But I want you to think about something today. You don't have to raise your hand, but you can do whatever you want. You ought to be happy, excited about it. But you're, if you're here and you know that Jesus has saved you and Jesus has made you whole and you have a home in glory, there ought to be some joy about you right now because I want to tell you something, church. Uh, uh, the gates of hell shall never prevail against you. It don't matter how dark it may seem. It don't matter how distant you may feel. It don't matter how lost you may get in the darkness of this world but Jesus saved you listen to this real close if you don't hear anything else I say today he saved you he sealed you and he'll keep you till the day of redemption <clears throat> that's Bible today church that's not something I made up to make you feel good I want you to know if I, if I was doing it to make you feel good, I'd do you like I do those kids on Sunday morning, that there's a desk full of crackers and M&Ms and uh, Snickers bars and those things, and I tell them, come on in and get what you want. Have some fun. I, I'm not here to tickle ears uh, uh, and entice you today. Uh, I'm here to tell you, listen, there ought to be some joy about you if you know where God is in your life. Uh, there ought to be some joy to know uh, uh, that I serve uh, a living Savior that I serve listen to me real close a risen king I serve a man that no other man is like he defeated death hell and the grave and he stands victorious on the other side listen I'm making intercessions for me and my pitiful ways and my bad decisions he forgives me day in and day out and he is the king of my life he is the life of my world. He is the joy in my sadness. Listen to me, church, today. Who is He to you today? Who is He today? Who do you say He is in your life? Have you given Him that title? Have you given Him that to reign over your life? I was telling Brother Mike today, listen to this real close. I don't come here because y'all pay me. Listen, you can take all that back if you want. But if you'll still give me the opportunity, I'll still come preach the same word with the same heart, the same truth, and the same power. Because you know why I'm here today? Because there was a day I could not stand. There was a day I could not stand. It wasn't my time to stand. And Jesus stood up and he took those stripes for me. He stood up and he wore that crown of thorns for me. He stood up and he walked carrying that rugged cross. And I want to tell you today, he is my rock, he is my fortress, he is my salvation, he is my hope. Who is he to you today? He is your stand, he is your steadfast. I'm going to try to finish here if I can. He said, The gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Well, we know the church is going to be strong. But what about us as individuals? Oh, some of you ain't going to like this. Each one of you is an individual church. Amen. You say, oh, well, no, we joined here. We're members here. We're harmony. Yeah, we're harmony as a body. But when we get outside of here, we got to be our individual church. We got to church ourselves. How many of you agree with that? Amen. We got to church ourselves. There, there's not a, a directory from Harmony saying uh, somebody's standing in your home saying, It's time for Bible study. It's time for you to do devotion. It's, it's time for you to pray. It's time for you to serve God. It's time for you to uh, give thanks today. 
I want you to know something today. We're a church, not a dictatorship. Listen to me real close. We're not here to tell you how to do and what to do and when to do and, and how, what the results should be. But we are here to guide you and encourage you that if each one of us, uh, listen to me today, uh, y'all know what it's like to go to church, Miss Tina. You know what it's like to get in one of those moments to to when you feel the gospel flowing through you. I want to tell you, each one of you today uh, uh, should have a daily experience uh, uh, with God outside these walls when you go to church. Mine happens for me every morning when I turn on that Spotify and I get to listen to that music and I get to go into work. I get to come in here. Sometimes I pull in here. Uh, Nick at Creative goes, man, what radio you've got in that car. I got it turned up. And James and some of them this week made mention, that sounds good. Because I turn Jesus as wide open as I can. And I listen to him because I want the world to know who and what he is to me. Who and what he is. It goes on and it says, And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Oh, glory today. How many of you? We didn't, we didn't do it back when we was buying our house 17, 18 years ago. But, but now every time somebody buys a home, they, they take a picture with their realtor and their closing attorney. and They got this big key in. I, I don't think it's all that safe myself, but we just bought a new home and we're going to be furnishing it with a lot of stuff. All you thieves, we ain't going to be home for the next two weeks because we're moving in. We're bought right here. Y'all come, just take, take advantage. It's like telling everybody, we're on vacation for a week. Everybody in the house is with us. The dog is at the dog sitter. We're not home for a week. Y'all go enjoy. There's food in the pantry. But we used to do, they do that now. When you buy a home, they they present the key and all that. They make a post about it. How do you think your friend's status would be if you had a picture standing there with nobody? But you had this key in your hand. And boy, you was loved up to that, 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 what you thought was there. You was just loved up to it. Just all, you weren't even worried about this key. But you had a picture of you hugging an image. And you said, I accepted Christ. And he gave me the key to an eternal home. People would say, man, you've lost it. There's nobody in the picture with you. That's what makes him some great today. You don't have to see him to feel him today. Do you imagine what it would be like if we could see him? Do you imagine what it would be like if he walked in here right now? Oh, Lord. <laughs> Hey, I got somebody woke up over there. Somebody got, was that you, Kim Reed? I got somebody woke up over there. Could you imagine if the king of kings walked in here right now and looked at you, Kim Reed, and said, guess what, son, you ain't in the field of Haiti. You ain't in the Dominican Republic. But I, Jesus, have come to see you today. You wouldn't be able to contain it. I'd float right out of this place, church. I'm just telling you today. I got in trouble one time for walking chairs in the choir loft. I'd probably walk the back of these pews if he'd come in here today. But listen, that's what makes him so great. You don't have to see him to feel him. He comes in and he stirs in your heart. And you get those chill bumps. And you get that joy just that runs up the back of your spine. And you can't help... Uh, to, to listen to Jerry Lee Lewis on the Jericho Road and sit over here and cry thinking about God how you've blessed that young man God how you've given him such a talent but God listen to this I thank you for his boldness today Ian I love you for your boldness I don't even know where he went to he's somewhere he's back there you so bold you're sitting on the back row good job son <laughs> boldness when you can't see him And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven and whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Ooh. Y'all want to hear a tithing message right now? Y'all want to hear a message on tithing right now? Whatsoever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven and whatsoever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. I want you to know something. If some of you could see the glory on the other side, you'd loosen up just a little bit. It's for another day. Then charged he his disciples that they should tell no man 
that he was Jesus, the Christ. And you say, why? Why not tell? Listen to this real close. He wanted them to be able to see it through their actions of worshiping him. You shouldn't have to tell somebody that he's your Jesus. Listen real close. This is the meat of it right now. You shouldn't have to be able to tell nobody when you're standing there and you're in your world. What are you doing? Oh, I'm praising Jesus. They should know it by your actions. They should know it by your walk. They should know it by your talk. Listen, oh, church, if you're sensitive, pull your feet back for a minute. Somebody should be able to look at you on Friday night at 10, 11 o'clock, no matter where you are, and be able to say that's a child of the king. That's a child of the king. Don't ever put yourself in a circumstance that questions the authority and the power of God. Amen? Don't ever make it to be to where, well, how could Jesus save them? I'm going to try to close. I've, I've done got all off these notes I've been on. I've went through these things seven times this week. And I've changed them all seven times. But you know what? What we ended up with was what God wanted. So I want to ask you this question today, and we're going to close. Miss Tina, y'all get a song. I'm almost done. I know it's short today. That, that, that's good. Y'all like them short, don't you? Amen. Got four of you that's ready to go. So 16 through 15, he asked, or 16, 15, he says, But whom say ye that I am? So he's saying, What about you? What do you say? And like I told you, I like how Matthew done this. He said, The Son of the living God. Do you refer to him as that? And, and I want to ask you this question today, and I want you to take this home with you today. What's your response to that? What if he stood before you and said, Who do you say that I am? Who, who, who do you reference me as? I have and will always respond this way. My rock, my salvation, my hope, my all in all. That's the best way I can sum it up. He's my all in all. He's everything I have. If something were to happen to me today and I lose my whole family, if something were to happen to me today and I lose every one of you, guess what? He's still my God and I'm still going to serve Him. He's still my Jesus and I'm still going to praise Him. You say, you mean you would praise Him? Oh, the Bible says this and some of you are going to get real. The Bible says let the dead bury the dead. Rejoice in the fact that you're still living today is what I add to that. But it says let the dead bury the dead. Uh, joy, or, or weeping endureth for a night. But listen to this. Joy coming in the morning. If we spend our whole life worrying about what's gone, we'll never be able to enjoy what's ahead today. Uh, church, I want you to know something. Uh, when I pass from this life and I go out of here, uh, I want somebody to walk up uh, to the casket and say that body's in here. I uh, shut the lid and said, let's serve Jesus today because I know where he's going. Amen. Don't cry over me today. I've won the battle. I've won the victory. Uh, don't shed tears for me. You love my wife. Uh, you love my children. Uh, and you tell them uh, with a surety, with a promise, uh, you'll see him again in heaven because we've heard it. Don't, don't celebrate me uh, through fried chicken and mashed potatoes. I want somebody to get up on the ivories of this piano and play that song, What a Meeting in the Air. Amen. I want somebody to be excited uh, uh, that I made it over. Uh, uh, don't sit and cry and make those people question, did he really make it? Because I'm going to tell you on the authority of God today to be absent from this body Listen, I will be present with the Lord because He saved my soul. He is my King. He is my fortress. He is my rock, my salvation, my all in all. What's your response today? You may be here and you're saying, well, I don't know. I, I, I can't. I can't feel it. But he told Peter, he said, upon this rock I will build my church. And I want to cover this just for a minute. Can't let this go. I mentioned it last Sunday and this is the part I've flipped over and turned around seven different times. Have you ever tried to stand on top of a pebble? It's uncomfortable. One single pebble. Get barefoot and try to stand on it. It just feels uncomfortable. But now go stand on the top of Lookout Mountain up in Tennessee and you can see the beauty of God over several states at one time. You can look out, I think it's seven states that you can see at one time. And then you feel like something. 
So this is what I want to say to you about that. He told Peter, he said, Peter, on this rock I will build my church. And I want you to listen to this real close today. He said, Peter, on you I will build my church. I'm going to put a heavy charge on you right here. Member of Harmony Church, visitor of Harmony Church, first time visitor, however many time visitor, I'm going to put a burden on you today. God's building his church and he's using your rock to do it. Each one of you individual, think about that for a minute. You are a part of the church and the kingdom of God. You say, well, this church is established and there's a cornerstone out there. and there, there's, there's articles and all this stuff. I want you to know something today. God has added you for a purpose today. So you take a bunch of little pebbles and you put them together and you, you, you do that little Red Rover, Red Rover thing I was talking about. You join up and you get tight. And I want, you to, I, want, I want to tell you today, you'll be a wall of a city that cannot be broken today. And that's what this world needs. We need a wall full of rock, full of people. God's using us to build His church. You may feel small, but you're part of the base. The rock in the Bible has always been a symbol for God. It's always been a symbol for stability, strength, dependability, and steadfastness. You can go back through many places. You can find where they were in the wilderness there. and God spoke to Moses and he went and he struck the rock and the water came forth. It's been used for altars. It's been used to mark burials. It's been used there when they came... Out of, the, uh, uh, red, uh, out of the sea, they set up a memorial when they made the crossing. They set up a memorial there, one from each tribe. He said, take a stone out of the middle. Don't take one off the bank. Take a stone out of the middle. And when you get to the other side, set a memorial that your children's children may remember. Now that rock means something, don't it? How many of you want to be that rock that your, your children and your children's children will look at that rock and they'll skip it across the river and it's never to be seen again? Or do you want them to look at your rock and say, this is a memorial of how I should live my life and how I should be, what I should do, how I should walk, how I should talk, how I should speak, how, the respect I should give to others. Kids, listen to me today. Kids, listen to me today. There's a memorial in your parents today. If you look and see, it's not they're trying to tell you everything that you do is wrong. They're just trying to tell you a better way to do it. But it's a memorial. But it's been used as memorials and it's referenced to many things. Even in some of the parables, Jesus himself referenced the rock. Who is the rock in your life today? What is he to you? Sing a song, this altar's open. Who do you say that he is today? Stand to your feet.
great God is. Listen to this. Moses found himself one time. And he was begging and desiring just to see God. Y'all know this story, don't you? He said, I'm doing all these things that I never thought I could do. I, I left my father-in-law's sheep and I went and I've delivered all these people and I've done everything you've told me to do. Why can't I just see you? God was trying to teach him the importance of just listening. Listening and seeing the burning bush. Listening to the voice of God. Listening to the reason. And, and I, I'm going to say this to you today with, with all seriousness. If you're that stubborn, and I'm not meaning that funny, and you just need to see a little glimpse of God, then ask Him. But let Him hide you in the cleft down here like He did Moses. He said, you get in the cloud for that rock. Listen, you get in the church. Oh God, listen to me for a minute. You get into a family of rocks. You get into the cleft of that rock and you let somebody love you like you've never been loved before. You let somebody take care of you. And he said, this is what I'm going to do. He said, I'm going to place my hand and I'm going to pass by. And when I go by, I'm going to let you see my hindering parts. Why is that important, church? You know what, today? I just want to see Him pass by and I want to be in the back watching. Amen. I don't want to be up front. I want to be in the back watching. The Bible said when Moses came down that his face shone so bright that they had to put a veil over his face. You want people to see the love of God, Harmony? Come and ask Him to pass by. And people will see through your life God has passed by that place. I believe with all that's in me that is, He passed by this morning. I failed Him. Have you failed Him this morning? I'll tell you what. I felt several things while we were preaching this morning, and I want to tell you what I heard most of all. It's me. I heard your voices saying, it's me. You're preaching to me. It's me. It's me that don't have God in the right place. It's me that don't have the, 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 the right blocks, the right foundation. And it's showing in everything around me. But I just now realized it's me. I want you to know something. When I come home in a bad mood, my whole home goes sour. Amen? Alicia? Amen? I come home upset. Josiah goes to the basement. But when, when, when I'm in one of those moods to where I want to laugh and giggle and tickle and do those things and, and be the funny guy and pull pranks and then Josiah jumps right in there with me and it's bad for Alicia. <laughs> Church, your mood and your attitude determines everything. I, I, I preached a message a few years back from Zig Ziglar. Your attitude determines your altitude. I want you to know that today. That's probably the most true statement. What's your attitude with God today? Do you know it's you? Do you know that the result of every negative thing around you is because you haven't put God in the right place? Come put Him there. Let's sing another verse.
for Faye. They've called an ambulance for her. Anyone else? I love you. I appreciate you. Oh, there's somebody back there. Uh, about 220, 35 years ago. Best thing ever happened to you. <laughs> Anybody else? Listen, we love you this week. Lift your hands towards heaven. Say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You're free to go. Remember, couples, see Kisa or Caitlin. <laughs>